Hello, students. Welcome back to our last day of our notes for vertebrates. And a quick review from yesterday. If you remember, we learned yesterday about fish and the three main groups of fish. Do you remember the three main groups of fish? If not, go back and study them from yesterday. And we also talked about amphibians and the different types of amphibians. Be sure to review your notes from yesterday to re brush up on that as well. And this brings us to today's last lesson for this week's topic, where we are going to be exploring reptiles and birds. So let's open our books and get right to it here, beginning with reptiles. Hopefully none of you have a fear of some of these critters. Uh, I, I have to say I'm not necessarily fond of some of them. Maybe I'll tell you a little story today about uh, some of them. But I think turtles are kind of cute. I like turtles. I like turtles. Uh, I know some of you have pets that are lizards of various kinds. I know some of you even have pet snakes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let's get right into the characteristics of reptiles. One of the first characteristics of reptiles is that throughout their entire life, unlike amphibians from yesterday, reptiles are terrestrial their entire lifespan. And so they have lungs and they obviously need lungs right from the get go because they breathe air because they're terrestrial. All right. Reptiles also have scaly skin. And again, when we talk about scales, they are more like the scales of fish, of bony fish. So there's a, a kind of a similarity between reptiles and bony fish. They have those scales, which are almost like layers of fingernails uh, overlaying one another. They're softer than fingernails, but really made out of the same material as fingernails. The keratin is the substance they're made out of with both fish and reptiles. So unlike amphibians that have smooth skin, reptiles have scaly skin. Another characteristic of reptiles is that they have a special type of egg. Unlike amphibians, and we didn't necessarily get into this yesterday, but if you think about frogs, maybe some of you have seen ponds with frog eggs in it during the springtime. Frog eggs look like uh, a clear jello-like material with black dots or brown dots in the middle, and they're very gelatinous, uh, a little slimy, because they're laid in the water and the water holds them up and kind of surrounds them and protects them and they're okay. And there are lots and lots of them. Reptiles, since they lay their eggs on land in a terrestrial environment, they have to have a special coating or covering around the developing embryo. And so reptiles have a special type of egg and the egg is more leathery. It's not like a chicken egg. It's not hard. It's actually soft. Reptile eggs tend to be soft. You could actually squeeze them, although I wouldn't do it if a mother alligator is around or <laughs> you might be in for a rude awakening. But, uh, but reptile eggs are flexible, but there is a tough outer covering on them, which protects them and preserves the moisture inside so the developing embryo doesn't dry out while it's growing up and getting ready to hatch out. Now, there are four major groups of reptiles. The first one are the snakes. Yeah. The second one are lizards. The third include turtles and tortoises. And finally, the fourth are the alligators. 
And uh, this video today will be a little bit shorter because I'm going to have you watch some other videos today, including one about alligators, which I think you'll find rather interesting. So there are four major groups of reptiles, the snakes, lizards, turtles, and tortoises, and finally, alligators and crocodiles. Can I tell you a quick story about snakes, though? Uh, I was just thinking of this. Think of snakes. Um, there, before I became a teacher, I used to work with the Division of Fish, Game, and Wildlife, and I used to be involved in research on different endangered species in the state of New Jersey. And one year I was, during the summer, I was doing a survey of the eastern wood rat, an endangered species that lives along the Palisades, along the Hudson River. And so I spent the whole summer rock climbing and uh, boulder climbing and doing a survey, finding the eastern wood rat evidence and cataloging and so forth. And that's a, a story for another day, perhaps. But on this one particular day, I'm about, oh, I don't know, 500 feet above the Hudson River and precariously pulling myself up the boulder faces along the cliffside of the Palisades. And I, I pull myself up to go to the next level of rock and staring me in the face was this at least 10 or 15 foot long black snake just staring me in the face. Now, my head was telling me, okay, black snake, not venomous. They're not aggressive. It's not going to attack me or anything like that. But my heart was going, oh! It was beaten a mile a minute because I wasn't expecting to see a big, long snake staring me in the face literally that far away. Thankfully, I didn't just let go and fall to my death. I lowered myself back down and I took a different route up some other boulders. And thankfully, I was fine. But uh, I'll never forget that big, long black snake staring me in the face in a very precarious location several hundred feet above the Hudson River. All right, lizards, uh, as we said, some of you actually have lizards as pets. Turtles and tortoises, by the way, uh, in the state of New Jersey, it is illegal to own a turtle or a tortoise without a special permit. You shouldn't have pet turtles because turtle poop can carry very dangerous bacteria called salmonella. And you could actually die from being infected from the salmonella and suffer salmonella poisoning by coming into contact with turtle poop. So, uh, you know, you really shouldn't have pet turtles roaming around your house. And again, alligators and crocodiles, there are differences between the two. And again, I'm going to have you watch some other videos about alligators and crocodiles when we're finished here and you'll be able to see the differences then. So those are the reptiles, and now we're going to finish up with birds. And isn't that just an outrageously beautiful picture here? This is, I just love this picture of birds. Over, see, over here, we see a picture of, I think that's an eastern goldfinch, which is the state bird of New Jersey. Here we have a male and female cardinal. Uh, here I think might be a Baltimore Oriole. Beautiful yellow contrast with the black. And over here, I'm not sure if that's a blue bird or an indigo bunting. I think it's an actual blue bird. Uh, the population of bluebirds are starting to come back with all bluebird boxes. We, in fact, in Woodshop, uh, a number of years ago, we made some bluebird boxes to put around the school's property to attract some bluebirds to come back. Not blue jays, but bluebirds. Bluebirds are much nicer than blue jays. But let's talk a little bit more about birds today. You see, birds are endothermic. And we know from a couple of days ago what that word means, endothermic, a.k.a. warm-blooded, or they regulate their body temperature internally, just like us. 
unlike us, they can fly. <laughs> I, I mean, without an airplane, I mean. But this is another cool picture. Look at Roy G. Biv. I love the colors of the rainbow. And I don't know if that's a doctor picture, whether that's been like Photoshopped or if those are like authentic parrots there. But I just think that's a pretty cool picture. All right. Some other characteristics about birds. In addition to being endothermic, birds lay eggs. Now, I mentioned a little while ago that reptiles lay eggs, but bird eggs are even stronger than reptile eggs. They certainly have a hard outer covering to provide greater support and protection, as well as a greater protection against the elements and preventing more moisture from leaving where the developing embryo needs that moisture the most. Another characteristic is that they have feathers. We're going to be exploring feathers in the laboratory on Thursday. So we'll be talking more about feathers on Thursday. And they also have specialized bones. And we'll also be exploring the bones of birds in more detail later on as well. But these are the characteristics Characteristics of all birds, but all birds are not the same. There are, in fact, most 9,000 different species of birds. And one of the most popular hobbies in the world is bird watching. Uh, I've watched birds, I've put up bird feeders to attract birds, and my daughters and I, we have like kept a record of the birds that have visited our yard over the years, but I wouldn't necessarily call myself a bird watcher because I know some bird watchers, these ornithologists, bird, bird watchers, they can be really, really passionate about birds, not only seeing them, but hearing them. And there are a lot of folks I know that have memorized the different calls of birds. They could be walking down a trail and her some sound in the background of a bird calling. Oh, what is an eastern spotted snipe? I, I'm just making that up, by the way. But I mean, they know the the sound of birds and the appearance of birds. The, everything you want to know about birds. In fact, New Jersey hosts the most famous competition in ornithology. Every year in Cape May County in the southern part of our state is the World Series of bird watching. believe it or not. You see New Jersey, and in particular Cape May, along the Delaware Bay, uh, is along the eastern flyway migratory path of migratory birds. And every year, Cape May, uh, ornithologists flock to Cape May, <laughs> pun intended. I hope some of you got that. <laughs> anyway, they flock to Cape May, just like the birds, to try to identify dozens, if not hundreds, of different species of birds as they make their way from the north to the south or vice versa. And Cape May is a stopping off point or a resting point for many migratory birds before they cross the big Delaware Bay. Uh, and so uh, it, it's like the, it's the location of the world series of birding each year. Now, within those 9,000 species, there are about 30 groups of birds and they range in size from the very smallest hummingbirds, which can be really, really tiny, to the largest birds on the planet, ostriches. In fact, ostriches can be so big, number one, they're flightless birds. They can't fly, thankfully, because their poop, if, it, if their poop fell out of the sky onto you, it would probably cause a lot of damage because their poop is big. But ostriches are so big, you could actually ride on top of an ostrich like you could ride on a horse. That's how big ostriches are. If you don't believe me, there's this great movie, Swiss Family Robinson from like the 1960s. But it's a really good movie. Uh, and, and they have ostrich races in that movie. It's pretty cool. I remember that from, a, from being a little kid many years ago. Okay. 
Now, bird bones. Not bird brain, but bird bones. Bird bones have a unique characteristic to them. You see, bird bones have to be really light and airy so that the body of a bird remains light for flight. If a bird is too heavy, it's not going to be able to fly. And there are flightless birds, like I mentioned, the ostrich. Also, penguins don't fly, but they're really good swimmers. But flying birds, and all birds for that matter, have bones that are very porous, a lot more porous than our bones. They are very holy. They are so porous, their structure is still strong, but they are filled with so many empty spaces. They're not very dense, and as a result, they don't have a lot of mass. And so the bird is lighter, which aids in its ability to fly. So bird bones are hollow, a very important characteristic. So they are lightweight for flight. Again, if they were too heavy, like, I mean, you could attach all the feathers you want to your body, but if you jump off a hill and flap your wings, you are going to fall down. Gravity's going to pull you down. Believe me, I've tried it. Yes, I have tried it. I've tried I've tried a lot of crazy things in my life, and that is one of the things that I have tried. I, I tried to make a hang glider once with big bird wings and, uh, and jump off the roof of my house, and, well, it didn't work too well. It didn't end well. In fact, that was one of the days I broke one of my bones. So save your bones from breakage and don't do things that I have done. So, But bird bones, lightweight for flight. Now let's get to their feathers. All feathers are not the same. There are two different kinds of feathers that birds possess. The first one are the larger feathers, and we'll take a closer look at these in the lab. These are contour feathers, and contour feathers are shaped for flight. If you've ever gone for an airplane ride and you had a window seat and you look out at the wing, you may notice that the wing, the shape of a wing, has a certain feature to it. It's higher on the top and it's bowed in on the bottom. And there's a reason for that. It's called Bernoulli's Principle. You may have learned it last year in sixth grade science. But uh, the shape of feathers enable a bird to fly. It gives the wings lift when it's flying through the air. So contour feathers are shaped for flight. The other kind of feathers on birds are called down feathers. Now, the word down doesn't necessarily refer to position, although many down feathers are in fact located down further on the body of a bird. But down feathers are tend to be fluffy feathers, and they are used for insulation. If you spend time in the woods, if you go backpacking or camping, you may have a sleeping bag filled with down feathers. Or maybe some of you have a down jacket in the winter filled with down feathers can really be effective insulators against the cold to keep your body warm. So these down feathers are short and fluffy and they're used for insulation. Again, we will be exploring more of uh, these features of birds, the feathers and the bones, as well as characteristics of fish, in particular, the swim bladder of a fish in the laboratory tomorrow. And today, uh, this is a slightly shorter video because I want you to watch a couple other videos I have for you. And so until tomorrow, I'm going to say bye-bye.